All right, guys, I just wanted to talk to you real quick on all the drama that's going on with Steven Crowder and this nasty divorce and how the videos are surfacing of how he treated his wife and all this stuff. And the reason I wanted to bring it up, normally I don't get into this drama, but there's a lot of posts and a lot of commentators right now talking about, uh, see, this is what the this is what the Christians do behind the scenes. This is who these right-wing extremists really are. One uh, guy was making posts saying, "Why should I ever even get? Why should I ever even get married if a if a Christian man like Steven Crowder can't hold together a marriage?" And all of this. And why why would you even do that? Or why would you even get married if this is what it's going to look like? And this is the reality. Steven Crowder, I don't know the whole ins and outs of the story. But if he was a Christian and his marriage failed, that doesn't mean that marriage is not sacred and important. If every single Christian sins and screws up and falls short, that doesn't mean that what Jesus said for us to do isn't still truth. In fact, it has been said that all of us will fall short of the glory of God. Do not put man or objects on a pedestal and worship them as if they're God because they're not. There's only one God that we worship. It's been told to us and that right there is exactly why. You shouldn't base the fact of whether you get married or not or whether you should follow the Bible or not based on what this Stephen dude does or any other Christian for that matter. The word is the truth. And if you follow me as a coach, I would like to say I'm accountable, but there's something I'm gonna do at some point that's gonna let you down. I've let myself down multiple times. I try to fix it, I try to become better, I try to not repeat the same mistakes. As I identify things that I've done which were sins, I try to get those out of my life and don't make them a pattern and don't repeat that um, that whatever it was, does that make sense? But that doesn't mean that just because I go, oh man, I'm gonna follow what Jesus says that everything's said and fine and dandy and I'm not gonna ever screw anything up again. So the important thing to realize here is that the truth is the truth. And one of the things that had me as a, as a teenager in my early 20s, one of the reasons why I was so skeptical and pushed back on my faith and I was so apprehensive to follow the Christian religion, right, or Christianity in general was because I said, A lot of these people are frauds. A lot of the people who go to church are frauds. A lot of these pastors are little pedophiles. I shouldn't say a lot, but like there's pastors who are pedophiles. So why would I follow these types of people? And I had a person in my life say, Rich, I'm going to give you a Bible. And in this Bible, everything that Jesus has said is in red. Show me where Jesus says be a piece of crap to your wife. Show me where Jesus says to use the church to control people. Show me where Jesus says to get rich off the church. Show me where Jesus says that it's okay to be a pedophile. And the fact of the matter is, he doesn't. So if you read what is the truth, it's undeniable. We need to stop putting our opinion of what God's teachings are by the example of what people set. They need to be set by what Jesus said. So that's my two cents. If you're judging Christianity or the faith or marriage on this dude Steve and his failed marriage, it, it, that's not where you base it off of. Go get a Bible where Jesus' words are in red and read the red and then make your decisions from there. That's just my two cents.